Hi friends, welcome to my another video. Today in this video, I will discuss about the FIBA regulation related to final distribution board. If you will understand the important point mentioned related to final distribution board in the FIBA regulation, then you will easily design any final distribution board as per FIBA regulation. So let us understand in this video what are the important points mentioned in the FIBA regulation related to final distribution board. The first important point mentioned in the FIBA regulation related to final distribution board is that all the DB must be factory builded. What does it mean and why it is important? Because the supplier for the panel is FIBA approved supplier or authority approved supplier. So they are getting the license based on the personnel working in that company and the FIBA is checking their competency that they are uh, competent enough to build any panels or not. So that's why FIBA always need a DB which is factory built and no DB are allowed to assemble at site and to install it. The second important point mentioned in the FIBA regulation related to final distribution board is that any DB which are installing outside exposed to the environment must be IP55 in grace protection 55 in order to protect that DB from any water or from rain. The third important point mentioned that in any final distribution board rewired fuels are not allowed only mcbs breakers are allowed mcb mccbs are allowed isolators are allowed but no rewirable fuels are allowed in distribution board the fourth point in the fiba regulation related to final distribution board is very important in this point fiba is highlighting that any final distribution board must have not more than 42 circuits what does it mean meaning that if there is any db then the number of breakers outgoing breakers in that db must must not exceed 42 okay and the second thing in this point fiba is highlighting that if a db has any incomer of course the db will have incomer the rating of the incomer of the of any final distribution board should not exceed 125 ampere if the load on the db exceeding 125 ampere then we have to go for the smdb we cannot make any final distribution board which having a load more than 125 ampere in that case we have to go to build one smdb and from that smdb we will fit two dbs and we will share the load there are some more important point discussed in the fiba regulation related to final distribution board in the section of 9.5 that is the distribution board what are the points mentioned we will discuss one by one here here the FIBA regulation said that the phase bus bar neutral bus bar and earth bus bar should be made up of copper and there will be a color code on that copper bus bar the th the another point mentioned in FIBA regulation related to final distribution board or any distribution board is that the cross section area of the phase bus bar and the neutral bus bar should be of same size and the earth bus bar should be minimum to be half of the phase or neutral bus bar the other point mentioned in the FIBA regulation related to final distribution board is very important here FIBA highlights that any DB should at least have two bus bar sections and these two sections should be controlled by two different sensitivity rating of earth leakage protection one earth leakage protection is for lighting circuit and other earth leakage protection is for power circuit let me elaborate this one for any final distribution board FIBA said there should be at least two sections of bus bar in order to achieve different level of earth leakage protection what does it mean? What does it mean? It means that one bus bar section will be fed from one ELCB which having a rating of 100 milliampere and this 100 milliampere sensitivity rating ELCB will feed to light circuit and other bus section which will be feed from a ELCB which having the sensitivity rating to be 30 milliampere and it will feed the final circuit related to power. So in that way, the two different type of circuits will have the different earth leakage protection level. Hope you understood this point.
The other point mentioned in the FIBA regulation related to final distribution board is that the final distribution board location must be easily accessible. Now let us discuss few very important points related to final distribution board which will help us in order to design the final distribution board as per FIBA regulation. As per FIBA regulation, the normal light load must be considered as 100 watt and for the LED light it should be considered 35 watt. As per FIBA regulation, the wire size for the lighting circuit to be 2.5 square mm and for the power circuit should be 4 square mm or above as per the load. And in FIBA regulation, uh, it is highlighted that in the light circuit, if the total load is 1200 watt, then we can use a breaker of 10 ampere. And if the load exceed from 12 100 watt to 2000 watt then we have to use the MCB rating as 16 ampere. What does it mean? It meaning that suppose we have five lights in a circuit okay and each light have 100 watt rating. So the total load in this case in that circuit will be 500 watt. Then the MCB rating for this circuit to be only 10 ampere. Why 10 ampere? Because FIBA regulation said if the light load on a particular circuit is less than or up to 1200 watt then we can use 10 ampere of mcb but suppose in another case we have 10 lights and each have the load of 100 uh, sorry 150 watt then 150 into 10 is equal to 1500 watt okay 15 lights and each light have 150 watt then the total load in that circuit is 1500 watt in this case it is exceeding 1200 watts and it is in the range of 1200 watt to 2000 watt then we have to use a breaker rating of 16 ampere might be you have one question that suppose in a circuit sub light load is exceeding more than 2000 watt also then what we will do in that case we have to reduce the number of light from that circuit in order to reduce the total load on that circuit and it should be within 2000 watt and we will provide 16 ampere breaker for that particular circuit hope you understand this one for the strip light we will use the actual rating mentioned on the strip light what we learned so far that for the normal light we will consider load of one normal light to be 100 watt for the led light we learn that the load to be considered as 35 watt and for the strip light we will consider the actual rating mentioned on that light for chandelier light, we will consider one chandelier light will be of 1500 watt load. More than that, FIBA highlights that the sensitivity rating, that is the ELCB rating for the light must be 100 milliampere or 30 milliampere also in some cases. Like if the light is feeding the garden area, then the ELCB rating can be 30 milliampere. But for the normal application, or indoor application when any light is feeding that that light can be fed from 100 milliampere ELCB. The other important point highlighted in the FIBA regulation is that the maximum four 13 ampere socket are allowed in a radial circuit and tot maximum eight 13 ampere socket are allowed in the ring circuit. If you know what is radial circuit and ring circuit then it will be easy to understand. The other important point discussed in the FIBA regulation related to final distribution boards are for the radial circuit 20 ampere MCBs to be provided and for the radial circuit 32 ampere MCB should be provided. It is mentioned here and here. Okay. Apart from that, it is mentioned in the FIBA regulation that the total number of six ring circuits are allowed under one ELCB. Okay, maximum six ring circuits can be connected under one ELCB. Here, I want to highlight one important point that one 13 ampere socket load considered to be 200 watt. If that socket is twin socket, then the total assumed load for that twin socket will be 400 watt as per the FIBA regulation. And it is common for DIVA and ADPC regulation also. Apart from that, if there is 15 ampere single socket, then it should be connected in the radial fashion. Apart from that, FIBA highlighting 
for cooker load that if the cooker is single phase then two pole breaker is required and if the cooker unit is three phase then four pole uh, breaker is required and the ELCB rating for that cooker must be 100 milliampere and the minimum breaker size for that cooker to be 32 ampere MCB and the minimum wire to be 6 square mm. It can exceed, it can be 40 ampere MCB and 10 ampere, 10, 10 square mm wire if the cooker load rating is more. It can be also 60 ampere uh, MCB and it can be 16 square mm wire if the cooker rating is more higher. The minimum is highlighted in the FIBA regulation, which is 32 ampere MCBs and the wire size should be 6 square mm. The other important point highlighted in the FIBA regulation is related to water heater. Water heater must be feed in a radial fashion. What does it mean? It means that a single breaker will directly feed one water heater. The rating of the MCBs will depend on the rating of the water heater. It can be 20 ampere if the load of the water heater is less and if the load or, or the rating of the water heater is bit high then we can use 25 ampere MCB breaker also. But the important point to note that the water heater will be feed in a radial fashion and it cannot be loop like two water heater with one circuit. It is not recommended and it is strictly prohibited in the FIBA regulation. The other important point highlighted in the FIBA regulation is related to air conditioning unit. The rating of the MCBs in the final distribution board directly depend on the actual rating of the air conditioning unit. Apart from that, FIBA highlighting that a maximum of one air conditioning unit is permitted to connect in a three phase supply. But if there is a single phase air conditioning unit and it is installed in the same room then the looping of these two air conditioning unit is allowed in FIBA regulation. The other important point mentioned in the FIBA regulation related to air conditioning unit is that maximum uh, three air conditioning unit can be looped in a one circuit when it is feeding a same room and the ELCB rating for the air conditioning unit should be 100 milliampere. FIBA highlighting one more important point related to air conditioning unit is that maximum 8 number of air conditioning unit is allowed in a normal final distribution board. But if the air conditioning unit is increasing and it is 9 or more than 9 air conditioning unit in a distribution board then that 9 air conditioning unit cannot be feed from a normal distribution board. There we should make one separate distribution board for the air conditioning unit which will feed all this 9 air conditioning unit. What, what does it mean? It means that the maximum 8 number of air conditioning unit can be fed from a normal distribution board and if the number of air conditioning unit increase more than 8 then we have to make one separate dedicated final distribution board for 9 or more than 9 air conditioning unit. In this video, I try to cover all the important points which is required to know before designing any final distribution board as per FIBA regulation. So in this video, I covered all the information which required to design a final distribution board. In next video, I will design a final distribution board based on these information which we discuss in this video. So please stay tuned and if you like this video, then hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. If you really find this video informative, then please share with your electrical friends. We will meet in other video. Till then, keep learning, take care and bye-bye. Thank you so much.